Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and welcome to our Wire Wrapping Masterclass Lesson 3. Today we are just talking about clasps and not just clasps that we can make, um, but different clasp styles that are available, um, readily accessible on the market. Um, and different things that I use them for. Um, at the time of recording, it's been a little bit, like a minute since our last lesson because I was actually having some hangups about the, um, you know, wire wrapping clasp tutorial because more often than not, I just use lobster claw clasps. These are what I use in darn near everything in varying sizes and styles because you can go from anything from just purely utilitarian like these guys here to something much more um elaborate and like might have some like filigree and stuff on it or i don't know um like really really ornate like i've seen some that are like great big with like scroll work on it and stuff but the concept is the same it's a clasp in that has this little lever hook That one's actually broken. This is kind of <laughs> not typical, but of course, because I'm shooting a video, I'd pick up the one that's broken. I'd buy in bulk, and sometimes you just get one where the spring's off. As you can see, that little wire in there. So that goes into the meltdown pile. But yeah, lobster claws just have that little wiggle, that lever, so you can hook through a loop. And it holds. You do not have, unless there's like a, a failure in the necklace where like um, a, a wrapped loop comes undone or the stringing material breaks or something, you're not going to have to worry about your bracelet or your necklace falling off. Now, the downside to these lobster claw clasps, as you just saw, is sometimes um, the lever mechanism either just is crap or wears out. Um, as well as uh, it can be cumbersome trying to put on a bracelet um, you know it's like you have to kind of hold the bracelet I always do the trick where you take like a bobby pin or something hook it through the end of the bracelet and like hold it with your hand and then you can hook it Whoop. but even then it's still eh, you know it's it's easier to have someone else put your jewelry on you for you um, so, but other than that, those are what I use in almost all of my work. Now, that being said, that's just because I'm boring and a fuddy-duddy sometimes, and I get stuck. It can be very easy if you have, like, a formulaic approach to producing your artwork. You can kind of get stuck in a rut of just using something because that's always what you've used. So this, is, this was um, a great opportunity for me to branch out and kind of challenge myself to be like, okay, well, it's hard to put on lobster clasps uh, for bracelets. What would be a better alternative for that? And this is where I'm going to start talking to y'all about a bunch of these different clasp styles that are on the market. Now, I just went to Joann's and picked out the ones that I see very commonly. And for bracelets in particular, I actually dislike the hook and eye clasps. Um, just because for a long time I would wear these like crocheted hip wraps. And the little loop being open on there would always, like, whenever I'm walking or, like, flailing my arms around when I talk, uh, it would get tangled and catch onto the lacy bits of my hip scarves or my tops or something. And so that would be frustrating for me. Um, but we will be going over how to make these because I actually really like, whoops, I really like these for necklaces, though I do also experience similar complications with getting my hair, uh, especially whenever it's curlier, um, tangled in the clasp. So if I'm like, if it's hot outside and I'm wearing a necklace and I'm, you know, playing around with my hair and like trying to pull it up off my neck, it'll snag in that hook. So we will still go over how to make these because you may have a preference for this, but for this being one of the most commonly, like the S hooks and the J hooks or shepherd hooks, um, or just hooks, um, style clasps they're actually not my favorite um but that's just me you do you so i wanted to go over these different styles here we have some toggle clasps that 
I think are actually really cool. And the nice thing about this too is if you familiarize yourself with, and this is in no way all encompassing, by the way, um, there are way more clasp varieties on the market than just the six that I'm showing, or seven that I'm showing you here today. Um, but the concept behind all of them is the same. It's to hold the thing onto you. So with a toggle clasp, these would be attached to your, your bracelet or necklace. Now, something that I see in work oftentimes um, is this bar needs to be able to be turned sideways to feed through. That way it will come to rest like this. And so if you, if you butted this part, this jump ring, like with just a jump ring right up to the necklace or uh, bracelet, and it doesn't have enough space to be able to feed through, your, you and your clients are going to have a really hard time getting this on. So just have it be like maybe a half inch of like chain or beads or just something flexible enough that you can actually thread the toggle through. It's hard to demonstrate with just the toggle floating around um, like this, not attached to anything, but I hope you kind of get the idea. Um, I can actually demonstrate real quick right here on this. Um, if, of course, if I had a jump ring on hand. <laughs> so professional. And I'm just going to pull out real quick my handy dandy chain mail box. And I'm just going to grab out two jump rings. And this will be great. This is a good opportunity to show you guys how I attach clasps to projects. Um, also, let's zoom out. I am going to be using, these are tapered flat nose pliers or stepped flat nose pliers that are two millimeter. I get them from Rio Grande. And these are my bent nose pliers. Links to everything will be down in the video description. Um, I d would, these aren't required, but it is recommended. Um, some flat nose pliers can be really great for doing nice, sharp 90 degree bends. So you could use um, chain nose or flat nose or whatever you prefer. I do have two sizes of round nose pliers. Um, round nose are perfect uh, for making loops, making spirals, uh, just anything. And so here I have a thicker tipped one and a more petite tipped set of round nose pliers. And then the ones that are luxury um, would be either stepped mandrel pliers or stick mandrels, some nylon jaw pliers for work hardening or straightening your wire, and then quite possibly a jeweler's hammer and bench block for um, hammering out and doing some different designs. Uh, so just, I just wanted to touch on that with you guys real quick. Again, all of that is down in the video description. Um, so... Now this necklace isn't actually finished, so the length on it isn't correct. I just wanted to try to demonstrate. <clears throat> and so to open the rings, what we would do woo, is typically with jump rings, when you get them, they're going to be shaped like this, where there's a little bit of an offset. And that's from whenever they were making these, they coil on a mandrel, the wire, and then they go through and cut it with a saw and it shoop. So whether you're going to be opening it or closing it initially, you'll still need to, like even though you haven't opened it, you'll still need to just wiggle a little bit to get it to be like closed, closed. And this is just butted. We haven't done any soldering or anything like that. But to open, I'm going to wrench it open that way. And that way the gap's there, but you can see from a particular angle, angle it still looks very round. And that's just a much cleaner way of opening and closing your rings to make them uh, retain their integrity. So I'm just going to hook this onto there. And so if we had hooked this on and there weren't this little bit of space right there and it were butted directly up against that stone, we wouldn't have enough space. Sorry, I didn't want to wander, didn't mean to wander out of frame. Uh, we wouldn't have the space for this toggle to move freely. And it's so important to have the toggle be able to move freely. And I always feel clumsy with these, but that's just me. 
Oh my goodness. Come on, Vaughn, we can do it. But yeah, so you want it to be able to pull through and then whoop, and it will catch itself. And these are surprisingly, um, like I've never lost a bracelet with a toggle on it. And even if it snags, it's sturdy enough that it might pull it a bit and then lose. But since it's not a hook, like a hook clasp, it won't get caught in your hair or clothing the way that hooks uh, can. So toggle clasps are a great way uh, for binding off your jewelry. And they're very easy, like they're very affordable and readily available in a bunch of different styles. But they're very easy to make yourself as well. And you'll notice on this one here, we have just a little bit of like, boop, something pokey coming off of it. And so, oh, we'll also need wire snips. That's a tool I didn't have out on the table. But you can just come in and snip that off. You could use an emery board and file it down a little bit. That seemed like a sprue. I don't know if they cast it or what, but it's just sometimes with manufactured stuff, there'll be little things that need tidied up and that's okay. But yeah, so that's a toggle clasp, <clears throat> and that's how those works. And so with the hook clasps, let me zoom back out for y'all. Here are a couple of hook clasps. And again, I got all of these at Joann's. It's not sponsored. I was just there the other day and was like, you know what would be a good idea? Is to show some examples of stuff that was already made. So it's hook clasps and also um typically if they're an, like hypoallergenic it will say hypoallergenic on it so I don't typically get my components from Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby because I don't always trust that like this might just be enameled alloy even though it's silver colored I don't know if that's a nickel silver or if they're silver plated like so usually if it doesn't specify, I'm like, mm, I don't know what you are. <laughs> but if it specifies, then, you know, um, that that's a good indicator. I usually try to only get ones that, uh, you know, say what material they are. I really like getting them from Fire Mountain Gems because Fire Mountain Gems is very transparent about, yeah, this has a nickel in it. This is that material. This is this one. Um, and it's really nice to... Uh, to be able to trust a company with that and so here we have this is one of the more fun styles of hook clasps because um, there's not much of a free floating hook to get tangled around on things and you just pinch it together and it's still there hooked and then you can unhook it so you'd use that little ring right there let's zoom back in you'd use this little loop to attach your jump ring and then you just hook whoop. you know I'm gonna get my big old meat hands out of the way and just use my pliers and so you would just hook this like that and then from there you just lock it into place so this is a much more secure option um, you can see how it's constructed here on the side and we'll unhook it by pinching in those edges and then go like that. So again, this can be a little tricky, um, but I think they're beautiful for necklaces and I've seen some that are, um, they have gemstones set into them or maybe some beautiful scroll work so these can really fancy up a piece but unless you're into fabricating uh like if you're just starting out with wire wrapping um this would be quite challenging to design your own version in wire wrapping though challenges are there to you know be risen to so that might be a really fun personal challenge for all y'all crafty folks out there and myself included to see if we can make our own versions of some of these now here are some hook and eye clasps that these are the ones that I'm so bad about getting snagged in everything and dropping apparently 
and the whole concept. And these are also the easiest to make your own versions of with wire wrapping. But they just hook through the hook and then the weight of whatever piece that you're wearing will hold them on to each other. So that's the hook and eye clasp. Now one of my favorite styles of clasp are magnetic clasps. But I usually like to put in a um, like a backup chain because these are great until you do snag your bracelet on something and the pressure put onto the bracelet exceeds the strength of the clasp. But I've seen folks do um, where you have a small length of chain so that the bracelet would be big enough to go over your wrist without those being attached. But then once you have it on, boop, it'll just come together. And I was really interested in trying to design some of my own wire wrapped magnetic clasps uh, using much stronger magnets. Um, and just it's nice to have options, but uh, that's just something to take into consideration because it's um, magnet magnetic clasps like this are a fantastic option for if you are not particularly tactile, um, like maybe it's just, I mean, I work with this stuff professionally and I have fumbly finger days. So <laughs> sometimes it's nice to just have a very quick, easy option. But this brand in particular does not feel like it would, um, does not feel like it has quite strong enough of magnets so more more data is required on those but i love the concept it just needs tweaked a little beyond these ones in particular now right here we have an example of a very fancy toggle clasp so most of these clasps that i've shown so far are designed that if you were wearing them like on a necklace they would be the clasp would be behind your neck um Whereas a clasp like this one, I would actually incorporate into the design maybe um, asymmetrically, like having it be to where, you know, um, if we had our focal point there and the chains hanging on it with like some beads and stuff, I'd, I'd design it to where the toggle would be kind of off to the side or quite possibly, um, that one's not quite right for it. It was too big of a thing, but if we made a pendant and actually, you know, uh, put the bail through there and so had it to where this was attached to the bail and then we could put the toggle through and have the whole necklace be supported, that would be a really cool way. In fact, I've just had the idea, I'm sure it's been done before, but to do a toggle bail on your necklaces so the bail of the clasp would actually be turned sideways and then you would just make a toggle that goes through. And so you can design your clasps into the piece as though it were a decorative element and not something to be hidden behind your neck. I'm sorry if my voice sounds kind of raspy. I'm still kind of getting over being sick. And then, and then I like choked on a green bean, y'all, in our um, live stream after party. Uh, and I'm just, I haven't been the same since. <laughs> now, as far as specialty clasps go... Um, honestly, so far, everything that I've showed you with the exclusion of, you know, something real fancy with like fabricating and casting, you can make your own hook and eye, you can make your own, um, toggle, uh, possibly there might be, you know, we might be able to make our own magnetic clasps, but these two styles are the ones that if I'm going to buy a clasp, it's going to be one of these two. I love slider clasps, especially for if you're making um, chainmail jewelry and you have a wider piece like an elf weave or a European foreign one or something like that, because this accommodates, both of these actually accommodate much wider bracelets. And so this way you can attach you know, instead of having your bracelet be wide all the way across and then bloop, coming down tapered to the end to like just a dinky little lobster clasp, you can actually find these up to, you know, like just a, I, I see most commonly three to five loops, but um, I'm sure you can find specialty, uh, 
slide slider clasps or tube clasps or slide bar clasps like there's a bunch of different names for it but to where you could accommodate the full width of your bracelet and that way the bracelet would be the same width all the way around and these are very secure very easy to take on and off again it, you just have to be able to uh line the clasps up sorry it's a pretty day outside so of course everybody's riding their motorcycles past our house um <laughs> that's all right though it's just loud um but yeah i i love these and uh, again unless you do like metal smithing or get into fabricating they can be kind of tricky to make yourself um and then though we will be going over an option that of how to kind of make one of these ourselves and then this style here I think is another great way to uh, bind off the ends of like maybe a very wide uh, choker style necklace or like just a necklace that's very wide anyhow and they can be again just a little tricky to take on and off yourself but we'll figure it out there we go and they can be kind of stiff to start off too so you can see it has a hinge mechanism in there. So again, unless you do fabricating or metal smithing, these could be a little bit tricky to make. Um, but actually this one is more along the line of what I'll be showing how to do a version of with wire wrapping as well. But you would just like the slide tubes, um, you could use jump rings or attach your beadwork or wire wrapping directly to these loops and then put the bracelet on, fold it and it'll just hold on to itself. So with all of these examples shown, and again, I reiterate, this is not all encompassing. It is like I started deep diving into all of the different styles and like types and subtypes, and it's just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. If you're just starting out into jewelry making, I just wanted to maybe familiarize you a little bit with some of the different styles that are out there on the market. But I really encourage you guys to just go to like a bead shop website, like Fire Mountain Gems or something like that, and just, just go to their uh, clasps section and just scroll. <laughs> and it was kind of, you'll start to notice, um, you know, that there are toggle types, there are hook and eye types, there are, you know, magnetic types, there are, you know, the tube types, and then ones that just kind of go even further and further from there, like there are shackle types that I don't have an example of, um, and of course I'm drawing a blank right now, but yeah, a little bit of googling and just searching around on different bead shops can really um, help broaden your, your horizons and just make a list of, or maybe draw out some sketches of the concepts and then see if you can make your own wire wrapped version of it. So let's, speaking of wire wrapping, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I'm going to scooch these off to the side. We are going to start with just a very basic hook clasp. And really, I don't dislike hook clasps. They are just like, I actually think I like them better than magnetic clasps, but I still like them well enough. I even like magnetic clasps enough to still use them in my work. I haven't come across any clasps that I can think of off the top of my head that are like, no, I hate that and I will never use it. So um, I, I just don't want to be hating on hook clasps because they are very versatile and very fun and if I'm wearing something that's not lacy they're they're just fine really um now we could use I don't recommend using wire any thinner than 20 gauge which is oh I saved a piece of paper to help me with this mm, I can't remember what the millimeters of that is off the top of my head I'll figure it out so all the gauges that I say in this video today are American wire gauge, not standard wire gauge. Um, so, but if you're shopping with Parawire, which is a, where I do recommend uh, shopping for your wire from, if you are looking for enameled craft wire, that's very high quality, won't turn you green, doesn't tarnish, and holds up wonderfully. Uh, this isn't sponsored. I just love their products, you guys. I've been using them in our work for over a decade at least like like all of the pieces i've been selling i even get my bear 
copper wire from them. Uh, though Rio Grande is also, Rio Grande is another great option for getting bare copper and sterling silver and stuff because they do specify um, dead soft, half hard, full hard, which sometimes that's pertinent. With Parawire, they don't specify that on their craft wire, but in my experience, like to my hand, uh, when I'm working with it, it feels, it's not quite dead soft, but it is certainly not half hard. And if it's between, like if there's, here's dead soft and here's half hard, if that's the halfway point, it's definitely closer to dead soft than it is half hard. Um, <laughs> so I hope that that's helpful to you guys. Um, I don't do any torch work with their enameled craft wire just because it will just burn off the torch, um, burn off in the torch. But with 20 gauge, which is 0.9 millimeters, uh, for those of y'all who don't measure in chicken nuggets, um, I wouldn't go any thinner than this because even with the 20 gauge, I either make my clasps where I'm doubling up on the wire or I do it wrapped, which in this case I did both just to make sure everything's nice and stable. I typically prefer to use at least an 18 gauge or 1.2 millimeter wire or even a 16 gauge or 1.6 millimeter wire just because your clasp is going to be taking the brunt of the abuse on your jewelry you're going to be it's the point of movement where you're putting it on and taking it off um, and you really want it to be able to hold up to all that wear and tear <clears throat> so we're going to start though with the 20 gauge which can be really nice and easy on your hands. And it's with the 20 gauge that I like to use my petite nose, round nose pliers, because it really lets us get a very fine tipped um, clasp. Now also typically, whenever I'm using a thinner wire, I'll tend to make a smaller clasp just because it lets me make the loops smaller. So I'm gonna be working off the spool on this one. Well, typically I would be working off the spool, but we'll go ahead and snip about five inches and I'm going to zoom in way way far and we will come to the tip of our wire and the tip of our pliers and we will start making just a little loop and you can see that the wire the pliers actually pinched the wire just a little bit when that happens i just come in with my flush cutters and i'm gonna snip off that tiny bit and so now we just have a cute little spire a little uh little hook and i'm gonna bring that in again and then i'm going to use the box hinge of my pliers to just close that. You could use uh, the jaw of your nylon pliers or your flat nose, but I just wanted to close it. And so we want to make sure that it's nice and flat that way, nice and closed this way. And I'm going to come in and just use the thickest part of my round nose pliers and I'm just gonna bend around and this technique right here would be exactly the same regardless of 20 gauge or 16 gauge and I just bring this around and that makes it look like that shepherd hook style and from here we could if this were a thicker gauge I could just trim and make a little loop and we'll demonstrate that on the next one. But for on this one, I want to do it wrapped. So I'm going to come down just a little ways further. About right there. So I want to have like about four millimeters between the tip of our hook and where I've placed my pliers. And then I'm going to bring this up and around. And you, it doesn't matter which side of the hook your wire comes in on. That is entirely up to you and your personal preference. <clears throat> and from here, 
I'm going to leave this on my pliers, but I'm not gripping super hard. I'm just holding soft enough that it's holding it in place. And I'm going to bring this around. And there's one little loop. I like to do at least three just to make it nice and secure. There's two. And there's three. Oh, and I've bent it a little bit with my finger, but that's fine. Also, please pardon my manicure. If it, like, these are working hands. That's just how my nails look. I tried. <laughs> so then we will come in and snip with our flush cutters. And then you can see it's still kind of poking out a little bit, though. That's why I like to use my bent nose pliers to come in and just give it a little bit of a smush. Just smushing that in so that it's not protruding out. No pokey bits. And this wood hook onto a jump ring. And you'll want to have it opened enough that it can fit onto the jump ring. But that would just sit right in line. Whoop! <laughs> that pinged. That's okay. <laughs> it just shoots, shoots out of the pliers. That's completely normal. <laughs> that happens. But yeah, so you could take something like this. We could have done a couple of loops and made it very ornate and fun. Um, let's actually go ahead and make the other end of this, which would be, we're going to use more of that 20 gauge. I'm going to zoom back out. And let's see, how much am I using here? Two, about four inches that I've thrown on the ground. There we go. It's super durable, it's okay. And this is where I would use a pen or a knitting needle or a stick mandrel or even my mandrel pliers. And I would come in and I typically like to make the loop that I'm going to be hooking through similar in size, like proportionate to the hook size itself. So this hook size has an inner diameter of about four millimeters and an outer diameter of about six. So I'm just going to do the, um, on this, the stick mandrels I got as a set, they are linked down in the video description. And on this one, I like to use the main part right here is about four millimeters, four or five. So I'm just going to bring that down and then we could bend at a 90 degree the way that we do for like when in lesson one when we we're making wrapped links. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then from here we can go leaving it on the mandrel one, two, and three, and then we can give it a snip. Sometimes if my uh, flush cutters don't go all the way through, like if um, I was too close to the tip, I'll just wiggle it off. Give it a smush in, that, that way it's not poking out. And then from here, I'm going to come out. We can see how much space those three loops are taking up. So I want to place my flat nose pliers. Sorry, <laughs> my voice is giving out on me. Um, <clears throat> we can place our flat nose pliers to give us enough space to do three loops again. Oh, I'm just a little more space, just a hair. And then I'm going to bend. Boop. A 90 degree and oops from this point the size that I would be making this loop because this is the one that we're gonna be hooking through <clears throat> I typically like to would make it the same size as this loop here but the whole point of that loop like the the whole motivation behind the sizing on this loop is determined by what we're attaching it to so I typically like to use two jump rings 
uh, two 20 gauge jump rings to fit like to attach my clasps to my necklaces just because it looks really cute and like matches or like if it's chain mail I might be able to attach it just directly on so the sizing for that loop depends on the project that you're attaching it to and um, I always just want to make sure that it's got enough space that whatever I string through it it'll still have a healthy wiggle that way we don't have to worry about um, the clasp getting stuck at an angle because of because it's too tight. We want it to dangle and drape nicely. <clears throat> so that being said, what size did I make? <laughs> and if you don't know, you can always, it's about mid range on the nose of my pliers. So then I'll come in mid range on the nose of my pliers and bring that around. <clears throat> Just like we're doing a wrapped bead link. And now there's one. There's two. Oh, and I can't quite fit a third. That should be okay. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to snip it. Just holding on to that little scrap piece. And then we can come in with our pliers and give it a fair bit of smushing to just make sure that there's no pokey bits. Uh, and see here, I could have actually continued around just a little bit to fill in that gap. So if we want, we could actually come in <clears throat> and we could snip it right We could have snipped right here instead of right there <clears throat> and what this would accomplish is then those two wires would have sat flush against each other <clears throat> excuse me y'all i am just falling to pieces so if we wanted to get in there and fix that up what i'm doing is i'm just gonna dig with my fingernail a little bit to try to push that back and out. We could also use, there's a tool for this. This is a T-pin. You can buy packs of them in like the sewing department or the craft section of any store. Now careful, cause they are very pointy, but we can hold on to our piece with our pliers to get our fingers out of the way and you can just use it like a crowbar to get in there and open up that little bit of wire and now we'll come in and I want to use my flush cutter so that they'll sit flush because these have the flat side and then the side that leaves a little bit of a pinch I don't know if the camera will pick up on it you can kind of see Yeah, it just doesn't want to zoom in. Uh, it doesn't want to focus for me, but... <clears throat> so we'll come in, and you can always trim off more, but once you've trimmed off too much, that's kind of it. So we'll snip it. And you can see how that's sitting. And then from there, ah, they're still overlapped. So I'll just get in there and open it back up again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, and now I think I've oversnipped. Nothing like real-time troubleshooting. <laughs> but now we can come in with our pliers and smush those together.
and now it fills in those gaps. <clears throat> and man, this camera zoomed in will see every little thing that your eyeballs don't. So that is our first style of clasp. Just a hook and eye. And now up next, we're going to make a S hook, which S hooks are really great because uh, especially if you don't know who's going to be buying the piece that you're making or you know if they're left or right handed, an S hook is a great way to kind of just make it accommodating for both. And even for, you know, sometimes I'm right handed, but I use my left hand more for whenever I'm putting necklaces on. Um, so it just makes it a little bit easier. This is another style where you could make um, a necklace chain and have it finished with an S hook and then have an option to where you can add a clasp to the second hook. So that might be a kind of a cool way uh, to, so you can dress these up quite a bit to make them very interesting uh, visually. And so I'm going to go ahead and trim off about five and a quarter inches is what I'm using here and I always give myself a little bit extra. <clears throat> now this is 18 gauge so I'm going to be using my thicker pliers and then I'm going to come to the tip now you can see here on this tip of the wire that's how the pinched side of my flush cutters leaves it or leaves the wire on one side so I'm going to flip them over and use the flat side and so much flatter, much nicer, I think. <clears throat> so we're, again, we're going to come to the tip of our pliers and the tip of our wire. And we're going to shape that around to make that little hook. And if that little notch from holding your pliers to the wire uh, bothers you, you can totally trim it. I'm going to come in again and use the box hinge of my pliers to close that loop just a little bit tighter and then we can smush it flat <clears throat> and now I'm going to use the thickest part of my pli uh, pliers or we could use a stick mandrel or even our mandrel pliers come in I'm going to hold against the six millimeter section and shape that around into our hook but you can see oh man that's not flat at all <clears throat> this is where I would come in with my nylon jaw pliers and smoosh it just flattens everything onto one plane and you can even work harden a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. And that way your hooks are more likely to hold their shape. And from here, um, we can measure or we can eyeball it from where the top crest of the curve is to where the hook ends. <clears throat> That's where I want to place my pliers on the other side. And then I'm going to start shaping this around. <clears throat> and I'm going to snip about right here where my thumbnail is. That way we have enough space to make that loop. And you can always, always trim off more. But it gets complicated if you want to splice two pieces like... <laughs> um, that doesn't happen. And so from here, tip the pliers to the tip of the wire. And 
and here you can see the difference between one that I've just made a loop on the nose of the pliers and one that I squished down. <clears throat> so I'm pretty pleased with that placement, but I'm going to come in and snip off just a hair. Yeah, about that much. In this way, I can bring it in just a little bit tighter. And I'm actually going to open this off to the side because I don't want to mess up the nice curve that we got. But I do want to be able to fit my pliers in there. And we can close that loop to make it nice and small again. And we can bring that into position, back into position with our fingers and then use our nylon draw pliers. Smush, smush, smush. Smush, 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 smush. <clears throat> And that's an S-hook. This side's a little bit uh, longer than the other, but I don't mind that a bit. You can do all sorts of natural variation on your own to maybe um, you know, make these very fancy. This is actually one of my favorite designs to whenever I'm teaching coiling. Um, this is so much fun and easy to just add coiled wire. Um, do we have an example? Like here you can see this wire has been coiled and it just makes the difference between bare copper, or not bare copper, uh, bare wire and wire with some texture. So for the next style, I want to show you guys a way to make your own simple uh, toggle clasp. So for this one, I'm going to be using the 16 gauge, though you could do this with 20 gauge that's been doubled up or 18 gauge. Um, we'll kind of get into var variations as we delve a little bit deeper into uh, the master class. And I'm going to do two inches of wire of this 16 gauge, or as I said earlier, that's 1.6 millimeters. So it's a, it's a stout wire, definitely uh, holds up pretty well. And pair wire, actually, even their enameled stuff, holds up really well to hammering. Like, you don't want to go full on ham on it, but, I mean, you can. I've demonstrated it in other uh, live streams and stuff before, just taking some scrap and beat, like, just beating it. And uh, it holds up really well. So um, for this project, I do, or for this style of clasp, I do like to use my mandrel pliers and I like to come in and hold right here in the middle on the smallest tip of my mandrel pliers and then I am going to push up trying to get my ends to be as even as possible and what I'm doing by doing that is the end that you want your ply your to shorten you can push your pliers in that direction and it will start shortening it <clears throat> but I want them to be even as much as possible so you can come in and do something like that or because I wouldn't want it to be just that one little bit <clears throat> excuse me y'all I'm so sorry Still getting over being sick, I guess, and fighting that green bean. <laughs> so I've done almost a twist tie twist. And now from here, we can hold that loop and press these out to the sides, our ends here. And we could totally hammer these. To get them to be just a little stouter so uh, loud noises <clears throat> but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just using the hard end of my hammer because I want to splay it out a little bit and then I'm just gonna be hitting starting at the tip and working my way in because I do not want to be hammering on this cross point because the wire will start to cut through itself and I want to leave this as structurally in you know good as possible <laughs> Words are hard.
Now we can also come in and hold this off the edge of our work. So you can kind of see here how there's that change in depth. So we can just bring that in. I'm actually going to hold on to this with my pliers. That way my fingers are out of the way. And now it will only be hitting what's on the, on the bench block. Now you can see one side versus the other. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do the other side. <clears throat> so there we have it. So you definitely want to make sure that your toggle is wider than the loop that you're going through, whichever way it's offset, because your bracelet's never going to sit perfectly exactly like how you want it to, depending on how you have your arm. Um, where did our example go? You know, you may have it where like here, with the pressure that's on it, it's pulling the loop all the way off to the side so we need to still make sure that there's enough toggle hanging over the end that this is not going to just go off to one side a little too much and then whoop, slip out and you also want to make sure that it's yeah, proportionate because like with this one I can't even fit the loop through the center of it. So let's go ahead and make our other end. So I'm going to use the thickest end on my mandrel pliers. And I'm going to come around. And I'm going to shape this. I am going to do a little bit of a wrap. Because you could also just use a um, correspondingly sized jump ring. And I've just done a single wrap on this one because the 16 gauge is substantial. Let's go ahead and give it a snip coming in with my pliers to give that a smush to make it look nice and uh, compacted like sitting shoulder to so shoulder to shoulder and we could totally bonk, bend that off to be a little bit more of a balloon as opposed to a pea and let's test this and I think that looks perfect because we can go one way or the other and it's not slipping off and you want to check from every direction too <clears throat> but the problem with something like this is it's so wide and these ends might get kind of pokey so you'll want to watch out for things like that and I do like to take commercially produced toggle clasps to use as a frame of reference to be like, well, how did they do this? And so the width of this doesn't seem to be exceeding the widest point on the decorative part. And that way, um, it's just not protruding out quite so much. So I might use a toggle like this for maybe a much wider bracelet. <clears throat> and so I'm going to come in and I want to be using the same size loop and that almost fits but we'll go ahead and do the small ring I'm going to snip off doing about two inches inch and a half and 
will come in. Just shaping around, pressing up to get that. And from here, I'm actually going to use my pliers to just fill in that space a little bit more. Because you could add beads, like we could have added a bead before doing that looping, or that wrapping rather. I'm going to come in and snip. I'm just trying to get that little bit smushed and shaped. So yeah. And now to make them cohesive, we could actually come through and hammer the loop of the toggle as well. So if we've got the toggle and the loop, let's go ahead and hammer that. I really love the character that hammering can give to your pieces. Now for Parawire, for their enameled stuff, um, I don't use a whole lot of textured uh, hammerheads um, just because that will start to kind of chew up the enamel. Um, but for bare copper, you could use a ball peen hammer and like add some really, really nice texture into it. Um, you could oxidize it and polish it to show that off even further. So there we go with a little toggle clasp. So now the fourth style that I want to show you guys how to make, um, because we will be covering more intricate clasp variations in future masterclass courses, um, because or in masterclass lessons rather, because we'll be taking you through entire step-by-step -step processes on doing full necklace pieces. So we'll kind of um show techniques that will be used and kind of be, be building on these core foundation techniques so again this is not all encompassing i just wanted to get you kind of started a bit <clears throat> and we will um oh my brain <laughs> my brain just stopped working entirely it was like nope out to lunch what were we talking about um, we're going to go over on how to make something for a wider piece because we are also doing a, a chainmail masterclass and so this way you'll be able to make clasps uh, if you're following along with that as well for all of your chainmail pieces. So for this one I am going to be using 18 gauge. <clears throat> uh, though it could could be done with 20 gauge as well and I'm gonna go ahead and work hard in it just a little bit and what I mean by that is we're gonna take our nylon jaw pliers and just run it along the length of our wire which not only does this smooth out the wire itself um, but it's compressing the molecules and making the wire just a bit stiffer so like um, if you are using sterling silver or copper from Rio Grande, this is something that I would recommend using a half hard for, though it can be pretty tricky. Like it can, it'll have a little bit more spring back, whereas the stuff like the dead soft and the enameled para wire, uh, whenever you curve it into a shape, it stays in that shape. Whereas wire that's harder is going to be springier. Um, and so it's gonna it's gonna fight you a little bit more so you'll have to kind of like over bend to get it to spring back to where you wanted it to be and we are going to do about 12 inches of this wire like this <clears throat> and 
are going to come in and you'll actually be able to feel with your fingers like it's actually heated it up from the pressure under pressure do, 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 do. oh no that's stuck in my head again that is a good song but two three four five six okay so i'm going to snip off at the six inch mark on each of these and now we're going to want to come through and using our square nosed pliers, or not square nosed, flat nose, but it is going to let us kind of make a squared off clasp tip. So we're going to take it and hold it here like this, holding quite firmly, and it doesn't even have to be close to the tip. And we're going to bend back. And I'm actually going to use the table to make that a nice sharp bend, and then we're going to bend on the other side. And we can take it, smoosh, smoosh. And now from here, I'm going to take this and use the whole mouth. You see it protruding on the right here? And we're going to bend. And I'm just pressing on the table because I want that bend to be the same. And then I'm going to put my pliers like that. And we're going to bend it down. And I'm going to place it on the other side. And we're going to bend down. <clears throat> so do you see how this has made technically a hook? <laughs> we can even bend it in just a little bit more. But this will... We're trying to emulate this um, this style. Oh, and I've made it too wide. But you can kind of get the idea that that would be hooked on to right there. And so that's the style of clasp that we're kind of making. It does not completely replace the sleekness of the tube clasp, but it's a nice alternative to this style. <clears throat> And so now we'll take this and we're going to bend that away. And then we're going to grip it right there and we're going to bend that away. And we want those to be pretty much more or less squared off with each other. Let's see if we can't. Zoom in just a bit. There we go. And now from here, I do like to use my mandrel pliers for this because it helps me to keep my loops consistent. We are going to place this in the center. And I'm going to make a loop on this side. On my stick mandrel, about the third step up is comparable to the smallest on my mandrel pliers. And sometimes it's nice to just be able to use your fingers to hold things in place and wander out of frame. Um, sorry guys. So there we go. Making that loop there like that. And I do prefer to do it on both sides, just to give it a little bit more substance. And then wrapping around, and this just keeps whatever we put through there. This could be like you could snip right there and right there now, and just have that single loop. And this would be a style, a kind of box hook clasp that you can do but whatever you put through there is going to keep these wires from coming apart, like jump ring wise. <clears throat> and I find that very useful. So now I'm going to come in and just eyeballing it, placing my mandrel pliers. And now you can see on this side, on, on the right here, I want to be stacking my loops this way. And on this side, I want to be stacking them this way. That way the whole clasp will be kind of the same thickness. So, yeah, just placing it because I'd like the final loops to be a little shoulder to shoulder. 
too. So I'm just setting it right there. And then we start in with making the loops. So again, I'm going to swap out for my stick mandrel. And if your wire gets kind of short on you, just grab your pliers. And I am just twisting, wrapping rather, that around. And then I like to use my pliers to go ahead and smush because we can use the resistance of this little ledge right here to make our loops be nice and stacked. And now from there, we can... I want to go ahead and give this a snip right here. And I'm doing it there because it's less likely to snag something than if we did it on that far edge. Like you want to look like we're like, oh, what would it be? Maybe the traffic um, of just movement of clothing and flesh. Um, you're going to get more traffic here on this edge than what we would there in the center. But see how those are the same like thickness now? So now we're going to do that same thing on this side placing, trying to make the same distance, <clears throat> and wrapping around. And if the pliers start to get in the way, I just pull them out and reposition them. And we've just been pressing that around. Now come into right here. You can see it's all the same thickness. I'm going to go ahead and snip. And you may need to kind of overbend it. That way they'll now sit where you want it to. But this way you could hook three rows of beads or um, very wide European 4-in-1 chainmail. You could just join it with jump rings. You could do three lengths of cord folded over and then like macrame. Possibilities are endless. And if there's any pokiness at all, you can sand it down a little bit, like file it. Um, I'd be careful on the enamel stuff because you don't want to just file down the enamel. But again, I'm running my finger over it and it's not, it's not catching because it's still sitting in line. So this was one side. Let's do it again. Same way on the other side with the other six inches. And so again, we're going to find the center. And now this is where I always kind of mess up a little bit because if I make the inside and the outside the exact same size, like if I make the hook and the loop the exact same size this isn't going to fit into the other one so i'm going to have to make this just a hair wider so i'm going to come like boop just a smidge over to the left of center and then do the bend and then i'm going to boop right here's where it's more important really over just a bit where you could even use your first half as a template and we just want it to sit with enough space that that will fit through so you could mark with a marker over here on the side but I'm just going to use my eyeballs because you don't want it to fit perfect on top of each other because then one won't fit in the other you want it to be just a little boop So I'm going to do it like right there. And it's important too, oftentimes, like if I were to bend here, I wouldn't get the same consistency. I want to, if I bent this one by holding and pushing off onto the side, I'm going to hold it right here and then push down on that side. And it helps me to get more consistent results. So that's a good bit wider than what I need, I think. So I'm going to come in about right there. I think will be good. 
and again it doesn't have to be super close to the tip because that's when you're more likely for uh, your pliers to slip and mar the wire okay now I'm gonna come over here square that up a little bit and we can test it oh that's way wider than I needed it to be <laughs> so see how it's wiggling but it was able to fit through so now we can fiddle with it and I'm actually gonna flatten that out and then let's try right there that's much more reasonable I think that's just fine so there's that this is another design where coiling mm, makes it look so good. <laughs> so from here, I am going to grab about right here, because we don't need a ton of space. And I'm going to bend, making that, that rectangle. And then whoop, straighten that up. And I'm going to hold it right here. I'm going to bend straighten that up and now we're gonna do the loops exactly the same like how we had done previously so using the same size mandrel on our mandrel pliers I'm just gonna stack that right there and I'm going to shape this side around now I'd like to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion and thank you guys so so much for being here I hope that this video is helpful to you guys um, if you have any questions ever, please just leave a comment down below the video or you can email us at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com. Um, if you include pictures of your work in particular that you have questions about that can be very helpful to us in helping you, um, as opposed to like very broad, vague questions of like, hey, how do I wire wrap? Like, it's like, well, go go check out, you know, Google it. <laughs> you check out our YouTube channel. Uh, check out Oxana and see... CSL or CLS I can never remember but I love her work and I highly recommend it like there's so many really talented uh, artists and educators here on YouTube that hopefully um, if I'm not explaining it in a way that's making sense to you maybe they will that's a beautiful thing about on YouTube is uh, you know if you go to regular university you get stuck with whatever teacher you're stuck with more or less whereas on youtube if you don't want youtube university <laughs> if you uh don't you know if something isn't clicking th there's hundreds of other teachers for you to choose from but uh we do try to be helpful any way that we can and we really appreciate you guys um just being here and keeping it crafty and uh if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them uh, beyond just watching and having a good time. Uh, we do shop updates every Monday uh, with cabochons, um, gemstones, and fused glass cabochons that we make, and all sorts of different stuff. And that's a great way to use the same, to use our artwork in your works of art. And we also do um, booty boxes in our Happy Crafter Club and all sorts of different stuff. And our Happy Crafter Club starts at just a. Oh! Sorry, my voice is giving out on me. Um, our Happy Crafter Club starts at just a dollar a month. And that gives you access to our Friday exclusive live streams. Um, and then just, the, there's actually a video that takes you on a tour of all the different uh, membership levels and what comes with that in our Happy Crafter Club. We also uh, are over on Patreon as well for just our one and five dollar membership levels so like if you want a booty box you've got to go through the, our website but if you um just want to be in the happy crafter club for the after parties or the digital content uh we have that over on patreon and that way you know if, if you uh, don't like using paypal that gives you an option as well come in here and snip but all the information for that stuff is down below you can find us on instagram you can find us on facebook links for all our social media are down below as well and um, we don't take sponsors for the channel because we're fan sponsored. Y'all make this possible for us and we really appreciate you. So you're not going to get a, <laughs> an ad for Raid Shadow Legends or 
um you know anybody who you know uh, paid us to have an opinion about their product um it's just us thanking you guys for being you so thank you guys so so much now back to crafting <laughs> so we've got our loops now and you could make this long boy like you could um do multiple of these actually if you had a very wide bracelet um you could have two of these made separately and that way the bracelet would have a little bit of flex in movement in independently um we before bending this we could have hammered it to make it flatter we could have done coils like there's so so many different options on this you guys but uh i do hope that this was helpful to y'all i think it is such a cool way and such a cool option to be able to make your own clasps and just make them uh, be perfectly and exactly what you were looking for so now we're going to get into two more variations <laughs> yeah i probably threw a lot of you for a loop thinking you know with our outro spiel that we normally do being like hey support the channel nope we've got more <laughs> at least two more designs that I wanted to show you guys. And I'm really, really hoping that my voice will hold out. <clears throat> so if you only have 20 gauge wire, but want to make something substantial, um, like make a clasp that is robust, what we would do is we're gonna, no idea how much wire I'm gonna need for this. About six inches, I suppose, with the 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to come to the center line of this using these flat nose pliers. You can actually see have a very, very thin tip. Randy actually ground these down for me on his grinder. That's my partner, Randy, if y'all, yeah, if you're just tuning in, he's uh, my other half who make, helps make this happen. But he ground these down for me and that way we have a very, very sharp tip that I can now take, put it in the center and bend and it's just taking up as little space as possible and from here uh if i tried to squeeze it to get them to come together the wire just twists if i'm holding it in my hands so i like to hold it in my pliers pretty close to the tip like i've only got about four four or five millimeters protruding and now i can come in and if you can see how i'm holding on to that maybe i'll do it like this that might be clearer we can smoosh and get that really close together and just make sure that there's no twist to it. And so now we've essentially doubled the thickness of our wire. <clears throat> and I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers, again, gripping as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. And I'm just gonna smoosh that around. Now on this one, even if it pinches, I'm not trimming it because then it's going to be two clasps again. So we've shaped that around and I'm going to come in using again the box hinge and just smush that down. And then keeping that nice and tidy. And then I'm going to come in and you just proceed as though you were just using one wire. So there we have that and this actually gives us a very um you could finish it like this where we just did a wrapped loop treating both wires as though they were one or we can come in i'm going to grip right here i like to i always like to leave a little bit of a gap to let whatever it is we're going to be hooking on this to hook through so like, this is just one of the loops that came with the store-bought ones, but I want to have that empty, real, that free real estate to come in and hook. Because if we butted, if there were no entryway, it'd be just too difficult to get in. So I'm just going to hold right here quite firmly with my flat nose pliers. And then I'm going to take my bent nose or whatever else you have on hand, and I am just going to twist once and then twice and that really secures it a little bit of a twist tie twist there but now we can come off to either side 
<clears throat> and so if you wanted to make your hook and eye clasp to where it can attach similar to these guys so if you wanted a two strand bracelet or like a wider bracelet or something um we can come in and go once and twice and just shaping that off to the side and then grasping at the same point on my pliers so that they're the same size there's one and two now i do prefer to do this on my mandrel pliers just because it helps me to stay more consistent but if you don't have mandrel pliers you can still do this you don't have to have that tool to make this possible and now we could wrap these <clears throat> excuse me so to do that i'm gonna just put And I'm getting kind of weird with it, but that's what knowing how to make your own clasps is perfect for. Because if I just wanted simple, something simple, I'd have just thrown a lobster claw clasp on it. But if I need something in particular, very specific to a piece that I'm making, this might be a way that I do that. So I'm holding through both of the loops, and then I'm coming around, and I'm just doing a wrap. And I'm going to come in and... Snip. Ooh. Shot across the house. <laughs> they actually got some air time like that. <laughs> it took a second or two before it hit the ground. And we're going to smoosh that down. And now we don't have to worry about those loops coming undone. And we can do that same thing on the other side. And just coming and grabbing that and bringing it up and around. And then slipping it. And then we can position them. And you could have this behave just in the same way as you did the other one. So it would just hook on that way. But I do feel like that that might snag stuff. So we could totally, which way did we twist it? Because I want to stay congruent. Okay, so I don't want to twist against the way that we did that original twist tie twist. But I'm just going to turn there to the side. There we go. And now you could take this and hook it. And it would set, and you could make um, two loops. Very similar concept. Where to go? <clears throat> very similar concept to this but you would just make two loops as well so let's go ahead and do that because it, it can some of this stuff might seem really obvious to you guys that it's like oh we'll just do that again but on the other side and different um but it's, I, I like to go real time with y'all this is another six inches um real time with y'all so that you can genuinely see how much time it how much time and effort and trials and tribulations and things that we face as we make our jewelry so again i'm coming in and we're making a double thick loop here on this end and those are going to come in and just holding this in place i'm going to pull that out just a bit so that I can grab, I can do this with just my fingers, I think, and we'll go once and twice. And now protrude those off to the sides. And from here, I'm going to do this one with my mantle pliers. And we can actually, I'm going to do this this away uh -huh. so there's one and 
removing the pliers and repositioning them. So there is the second loop. So it's two loops thick. And now I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. I haven't wrapped it yet, but we'll get there. So there's one around. And you want to make sure whenever you're making the wrapped loops like this that they just stack like a side by side. And so there. Now, now on this I am just going to put my pliers just because they're a little less cumbersome. I love those mandrel pliers but they are honking. Yeah, they are big. <laughs> and I'm going to actually flip this over just because I prefer prefer to wrap in that direction. I'm so sorry you guys like I feel like my voice keeps cutting in and out and it's like it hurts so much to talk um but I really needed to get this video produced um so I just I apologize but I also thank you guys for being here and being patient okay so I'm just wrapping around there we go <clears throat> and now I'm going to go ahead and snip And snip. Smoosh. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to scooch those out of the way. But I'm going to bring that around. And bring that up. Come over and through. Also, I want to give a shout out to everybody who's watching this during the premiere. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. If you weren't here during the premiere and you would have liked to have been, uh, sign up for our free newsletter. I send out an email about 30 minutes before our tutorials go live. Uh, and we sit and even though the tutorial's pre-recorded, uh, I'm answering questions uh, and hanging out and chatting live in the premiere. So it's a great way to, if you're watching uh, one of the videos and you have a question like right then, or you just like socializing because you're like me and you're a craft hermit, um, then it's, it's just, it's fun. I like it. And I like getting to hang out and get to know y'all. So thank you guys for being here. <clears throat> so that's how that one's looking. And so here you can see we could do I feel like those loops aren't exactly the same size, but they're they're close enough. It'll do. But uh, we could make a wider bracelet. So this would be perfect, I think, for like if I had um, like a 15 millimeter square or rectangle bead that had two holes, I could thread the string material and do that. That would be really cool. But this would just hook through. And then we start running into some problems where this isn't laying perfectly flat. Like, see how it's a bit, whoop, well, <laughs> a bit offset? So what we would do then is we would just take this, and I'm going to hold this side down, and then I'm going to smush on that side, and then there. So we can actually put a little bit of a twist in both sides so that it does then sit flat <clears throat> but then it makes it particular about which way which way you insert from so while that is an option it might not be your favorite way and that's okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this back to being this away because you could have it hook and rest the hooky side towards your skin and then you're a lot less likely to get it snagged on stuff so there's that we have that style <clears throat> we have 
we have our toggle clasp and we have our basic hook and eye. Oh, and then the S clasp. So let's, the last design we'll be going over is how to make the toggle clasp if you uh, only have 20 gauge wire. So the other end would be exactly like this, but I'm still going to demonstrate it. <clears throat> I am just hoping that my voice holds out. <laughs> so I'm so sorry if you clear my throat in y'all's ear, but here we are. Okay, <clears throat> so let's do the toggle end first. So we have our 20 gauge, we have um, our flat nose pliers, and I'm going to grit about, if this is the half, right here is the half weight line. <clears throat> so offset about two, about half an inch or two plier nose widths off to the side, and I am going to just bend that. And then I'm going to flip it around and again, just make it however wide that you want your toggle to be. So I'm going to go a little narrower and I'll go a little longer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to come in and bend like that. Oops, bump the tripod. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in and grasp in the center and a little too far away so it went ahead and twisted out of alignment. Oh my gosh, my voice, I'm so sorry. Give me just a sec. So I'm just going to move my pliers in a little closer. Put that back into alignment and smoosh. <clears throat> I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. And I've actually bent the wire out a little bit just to make room. And I'm going to smush. Oop. So I've bent the plier, the wires out of alignment so that I can fit my pliers in. I'm going to have to take a break for a while because my voice, but I, I will be right back for you. It won't take but a second, but I'm going to take just a little bit. Alrighty guys, I think that that helped. Hopefully <laughs> I did some honey and I'm on like my fourth cough drop, <clears throat> but we can come in and... bend the wire <clears throat> like I'm fine until I talk you know that thing that I need to be doing but this space here is what we're going to be using to put our <clears throat> mandrel pliers into And we'll come around. Oops, didn't mean to go out of frame. Remove the pliers when they're in the way. <clears throat> and then reinsert them. Oops. <clears throat> so what I should have done here 
was give ourselves a little bit of stem room for us to do the wrapping. So it's not too late. <clears throat> That's probably the best thing about para wire. Woo! Got kind of weird on me. Is it is so supple and accommodating and very forgiving. So I'm just gonna bring that down. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this looks pretty miserable. <laughs> pretty, um, pretty wrecked. But, let's see if we can salvage it. So the first thing we're gonna need to do <clears throat> to salvage this is straighten these back out. Okay, and now from here, let's have them both be bent in the same spot. So there's that one. And then that one. And now we can smush those to where it's all in line. And now from here, we will bend these off to the side, leaving enough space for us to do our wrapped loop. Have this loop that you're making right now be whatever size you need it to be <clears throat> for the piece that this clasp will be going on. And then wrap once and twice. Now also, this is a great opportunity. We could do a little curl cue thingy. I'm just gonna make a little decorative spiral. Don't be afraid to use your pliers to make things go a little more tightly. <clears throat> and then I'm going to bind that off. By continuing that wrap around. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I know that there's the risk of me wandering out of frame, but I really want you guys to be able to see what's going on. Oh, and this is so uneven. That's fine. <laughs> I'm actually going to put my round nose pliers in here and force the whole rosette a little more over to the left. Or try to. Then, oh, I'm not even frame. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and snip that and get it just shaped down using my bent nose pliers. To get, our, to get our smush on. Making sure there's no pokey bits. And if your loops go out of alignment, you can just set them right with your round nose. <clears throat> so we could leave this like this, or I'm going to grasp right here with my bent nose. <clears throat> and then you can come in with chain nose pliers. And I'm going to grasp right here. Actually, I'm going to grasp with my nylon draw pliers. That way I can hold on to the bulk of it. And I am twisting this way. And then I'm going to take it and turn it the other way. And since I want it mirror image, since I was turning, since I was turning this way on the first side, on this side, I'll grip and rotate this way. My knuckles towards me, as opposed to away from me. So I'm grasping and twist, grasp, oops. And 
twist. And now, I think we salvaged that pretty well, y'all. And it's very stout. Very, very work hardened. <clears throat> so you would definitely want to make sure to have a loop that's appropriately sized that you can still fit everything through, especially since this one is just a little bulkier um, in its center area. Um, but yeah, I actually, I think I really like this one. That looks pretty nice. <clears throat> and so let's make a fancy other end for it. So for this one, I'm going to use the largest um, bar barrel on my mandrel pliers. You could use knitting needles or pens or paintbrushes, just whatever you have. And I'm going to go ahead and do two wraps. So it's like that. And then putting this back onto our pliers just to hold it. I'm going to go once, twice, and <clears throat> thrice. And on this side I'm going to use to make the loop, and this one I'm going to use to make the decoration. So I, I may actually recommend uh, 8 inches, 8 or 9 inches instead of 6 inches on the toggle, uh, just to give yourself a little bit of room for creativity. But let's go ahead and do that loop first. I like to get the structural stuff taken care of, that way we can just have fun. <clears throat> so there's one and two. And I'm gonna scooch this one out of the way just a bit so that it gives us room for this wire. Oops. To grasp. Oops, bump on the tripod. <laughs> I just want to smush that wire over to wrap and bind off our loop. So I'm just tucking it in to the center. So you can see here on the back side, that's our little wire. But there's no way that it can snag on stuff, so that's good. And now from here, <clears throat> what our recommended lesson four for our wire wrapping masterclass is actually our itsy bitsy spiral tutorial um, that we cover in five easy wire wrapped earrings. So that will be linked down in the video description below. Um, and let me know if you guys would rather just go watch that tutorial or do you want me to make a lesson for masterclass that covers a lot of those same principles, but maybe incorporates a couple new ideas? So now that I say it out loud, I, I have an inclination towards the second idea, um, but I'd still love to hear from y'all. So from here, when we do an itsy bitsy spiral, let's grab some scrap. Um, drum, 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 drum. Here we go. <clears throat> so we'll hold on to the ends of our wire between our middle finger and thumb, bring our fingertips together. I have my right on top, but if you want a mirror image, you can do left on top. So that's just the difference that that makes. But we're going to take it and go whoop. And it's very much the same as when you're like, itsy bitsy spider. Like, how do they do that? Yeah, itsy bitsy spider. That motion. But with your fingers. And once you've done your first twist, you just bring it back around, take that little loop, put it between your fingers again, and you start making a little thing. And then you just keep repeating that, and it makes really tight inline spirals. <laughs> Which what I mean by inline is it's a spiral that's made 
in the middle of your wire as opposed to a spiral that's made on the end. And using your fingertips just keeps it from stacking on top of itself. And you can just go all day. So with that in mind, we can hold this holding onto the loop there and the wire here where we want the spiral to be is where we put our fingers and then we do ah look at that little e ah. I never get tired of this technique <laughs> like I truly don't it's so much fun so I don't know if I have enough wire to I thought to make a bigger spirally bit but I think we're just going to stop that right there Hold it with our nylon jaw because I don't want to be marring anything up. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to grasp it, I'm going to wrap once around. I'm glad we made that choice because now we can finish it with a little spiral. And since this is 20 gauge, I'm going to be using my fine tipped pliers again. And just come in making a little loop boop right there again it had been fancier if we had more wire but this is not what we planned but it's what we're working with and that's okay and i'm just lifting it a little bit so i can get my pliers in there to flatten it and then i'm going to smoosh it back in but yeah so of all the clasps i think this one might have ended up being my favorite like i think it looks very floral and cottagey and fun I think there's definitely ways that we could incorporate beads or gemstone beads, like either glass or gemstone, uh, into this. Like, very, very cool. So there's that one. I still have one more, one more design for you guys. And um, <clears throat> for this one, we will be using square bare copper. And we could torch the tips on this. So we kind of touched on that, I think in the ear hook tutorial but um so if you're interested in using a torch uh head on over there for that but i was going to cover filing for this one we're going to make a fancy um s hook clasp so i'm going to pull off again about six inches that's actually way more than what we need um but let's do five inches it just depends on the size of the clasp that you like. And this is 18 gauge square. So I would kind of like for it to come out about the same size as this one. But what we're going to be starting with, and you could be, you could use, there's a tool called a pin vise that you could use for this, but I'm just gonna hold on to it with my pliers. And turning, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. The reason why I've zoomed out is because I want you to be able to see the orientation of my hands. I am twisting my left hand as far under and I'm twisting my right hand as far back and grasping the wire firmly and then twist. And then I re let go with the pliers in my right hand, retwist, grab and twist. Coming back around, grabbing, twisting. Coming back around, grabbing, Twisting. No special tools required. Grab, twist. Let's do one more. Grab, twist. Uh, maybe one more still. Grab, twist. <clears throat> and there we have a beautiful, twisted, very work hardened wire. So, like, yeah, that's it. When anytime that the wire springs back, <laughs> You know, it's getting pretty serious. Um, pretty, pretty stiff, but that's okay. Um, if you twist your wire and it's bare copper like this, you can torch it to anneal it, but we don't have to do that. It's just an option. So from here, I am going to zoom back in. Way, way far. And I'm going to start just here at the tip and I want to snip in line with our twisting that went across the house and you can see where it made that cut and we're gonna file this <clears throat> now these are just a set of metal files like 
nothing super fancy. I want to pick one that is flat. And then I'm just going to take this and you can see how pointy it is. I'm just going to smooth that end down. <clears throat> now again, I don't recommend doing this for the enameled stuff because uh, if you're using like a silver plated, it's going to expose the copper to file it. <clears throat> I'm actually going to, I mean, I do want it angled, but I don't want it like sharp and jagged. So I'm just deburring more or less. And I'm just turning it in my hand while filing. And this will hopefully taper it. Yeah, real nice. <clears throat> and now from here, we'll take this and I'm going to hold it in the thickest part of the jaws of my pliers to start with. Let me see if I can't. Yeah, I think that'll be a good zoom to be on. And I'm just starting the curve. and then moving down to a thinner part of my pliers to encourage that around. But do you see how it gives it such a cute little mm, something something? Like that tapering. And now I'm going to come in and smoosh that down. <clears throat> and then we're going to use the 8mm barrel the fourth largest and just shape around <clears throat> and then eyeball it or measure it whatever makes you happy bring this side down and around and I think it'll be around there <clears throat> this part right here. So right there is going to be where I'm cutting. And again, I want to cut in line with the twist. Mm, yeah, right there, I think. And that gives us a really nice taper off. I guess I should have come in from the other direction, huh? Eh. We'll see how it goes. It may make no difference. It may be critical. We'll see. Just tidying that up. <laughs> yeah, you can almost see how it really... There's some fine and sharp copper there at the end, so... So we're going to come to the thicker part of our pliers where we have a little bit more grip. <clears throat> and you can almost use the pressure of your pliers to shape that metal. Okay, so once we've gotten it curved up a little bit, we can come around and come to a thinner part of our pliers. <clears throat> And then smoosh it. Oops, sorry, I don't mean to just slamming pliers intensifies. <clears throat> so now we're going to come in with our round nose pliers or mandrel pliers again and just reshape. And there we have a really pretty. Very simplistic, very work-hardened S-hook. <clears throat> and whenever I'm using these, I do like to kind of scrunch those down just a little closer. Because if you can have a little resistance and like a boop before the... That's what I like. 
I don't want it to be so open that it there's no resistance. Just enough that goes on in. <clears throat> and then you could make twisted wire and make your loops for either end. <clears throat> that would be super cool. Or you could just have that be how you're like let's pretend like these match <clears throat> that you hook your loop on and that's how the necklace hangs like I'd have put the necklace into this part and then see so if you can visualize that the bale would be suspended on that loop and then the necklace is together it could really open up some interesting design elements or you could have a really pretty loop that your bale is attached to or just is the bale with an s hook coming off on either side and then you can just squeeze it down and that'd be nice and secure fun stuff to experiment with for sure so that is the tutorial, y'all. <clears throat> I'm really glad I did the outro bit a little bit earlier because I don't know if my voice could do it this time. But again, please find us on social media. If you want to see what we're up to, you can tag us so we can see what you're up to. Whenever you follow along with our tutorials or use anything from our shop and your work, we totally love uh, to see what y'all are up to. And um, when we're able, we like to feature folks. So if you use some of our artwork and your works of art uh, and would like to be featured, um, be sure to tag us over on Instagram or post it onto um, our Facebook wall. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, all the links for everything are down in the video description. Tools, materials, social media, how to support the channel, different things like that. So thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me here today. I really look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye, guys. <laughs>